I guess to tell you about my involvement with the Big Thicket, I need to go a long way back. I was uh, born and raised in this area. Spent my childhood in the woods and along the streams. In the days before, the lumber companies had cut it out and the woods were still virgin. And uh, it's been my memory of these forests and this land that have... Uh, inspired me to try to save a little bit of it, a little bit of what's left, and in my own preserve here to try to restore a little bit of it as it once was. One of the biggest contributions that Geraldine Watson made was to define for the first time in words that laymen like me and other conservationists could understand, the whole concept of diversity and plant communities, plant associations, how they get subdivided, what the overstory is, what the understory is, what the forest floor contains, and the uniqueness of these areas and the areas where these areas overlap. And you can, as Geraldine used to say, you could stand in one place and you could face in a different direction and find an ecosystem in every direction you were looking. Uh, this sort of thing was defined by Geraldine, and we owe her big time for it. And she, too, shared a little of this charisma factor that uh, Lance had a bit of. And she could absolutely spellbind groups of uh, people, whether they were church groups coming out here or garden clubs or whatever. Richard Harrell was especially interested Dr. Harrell was especially interested in the waterways, which were being badly polluted. And you can credit Richard Harrell with cleaning up the Nature's River, which was so toxic that nothing could live in it from um, the, let's see, it's tidal up to Lakeview. When the tides would move in, the little fish would swim up the river ahead of it, the, the toxic you know, water, and you could see crabs crawling up on the bank. And uh, Richard Harrell was largely responsible for, uh, for the work to clean up the natures. When they first formed, the, when Congress first passed the law to form the big thicket, in fact, it wasn't even, uh, had, the land hadn't been purchased at that time. At that time, I was contracted by the Department of Interior to look at water quality in the Big Thicket National Preserve. And so from 1974 until 1981, we made studies on all the streams in the Big Thicket National Preserve. And we set up water quality monitoring stations in each of the units and also in the corridors, the Natchez River Corridor, the uh, Pine Island Bayou Corridor, and we took samples from different quarters and units a year at a time. Okay, without Ned Fritz, we would have never uh, got the bills passed. Ned had all of the knowledge of how to deal with, uh, uh, you know, politics and, and legislation and all of that. Uh, Okay, without Maxine Johnston, we would have never made it because Maxine was great at knowing how to uh, uh, write reports and, and, you know, all this information and everything for the right, right people and all of that. So anyway, it was those people that we uh, were able to get a Big Thicket National Preserve. The Big Thicket Association was simply a small East Texas organization. We had a few members in other places, but essentially we were greenhorns who needed some help and guidance. And one of the people who became involved was that grand old guru of Texas environmentalism, Ned Fritz. Ned formed a big thicket coordinating committee. They got representatives from each of the major conservation groups like Audubon chapters, Sierra chapters, uh, Texas Conservation Council, uh, Texas Committee on Natural Resources, all of these groups 
were part of an umbrella organization. And it was from them that we in the Big Thicket Association learned a lot of lessons about lobbying, about how very, very small uh, some of the vision and outlook of some of our members were. I think it's very important, no matter what, to let you know what is right, beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, stand by it, don't let anybody, uh, you know, drive you away or persuade you different or anything, but just simply make your stand. And if, once, you're once you're persuaded that uh, the thing is right, 